my, I can see the trunk starting to move back up to a vertical position. Oh, the metal is, the metal is bending a little more. Here it comes, look out, look out, get out of the way. Oh, the old guy's all right. <laughs> the tree slid back a little. Doesn't look like anybody was hurt. This may make it more difficult to get the tree out. Tuesday morning, and the ice is melted enough for me to go down into the ravine, at least part way. We'll see what the damage is. Wendy was talking about how going through this experience was kind of like living in a movie. And kind of like the movies, you know, where you see the disaster and the only thing left standing is the church. That kind of fits. I'm looking for things to be able to say it could have been worse. There's a couple of things that I can say that about. It looks like this little tree is still alive, although it's been severely topped at the end. I always like that, whoa. <laughs> I always like that tree just because it's got that strange little mossy curve to it with the, with the ferns growing on it. It looks like, I don't know if you can tell, but there's a, a little cedar tree that we planted earlier this, earlier last year. That's just, although it's got a little branch on it, it looks like it's fine. That one, has been topped. That's a little too bad, but it's still alive. This one down here in the planter looks like it's just bent over a little bit. I can't quite tell if it's been topped or not, but it's definitely still alive. Right over there is another little cedar tree right underneath the log. And it's, uh, it's still alive, although it's, it's right underneath that log. This little uh, little tree in the planter looks like it wasn't touched, so that's nice. I think maybe after I get this all cleaned up eventually, it won't be too bad. We'll probably want to plant some more trees out here to replace eventually the ones that we've lost. We've got the folks from Service Master out here now cutting up the trees that hit our house. They've declined to be on camera. So I'll just describe what they did Basically, the tree is off their house now, and we just need to tarp the roof to prevent any water from getting in to do more damage than has already been done. It was pretty impressive with that tree that was leaning on the house. 
they cut it off at the bottom and then cut off successive chunks of it going up before getting up onto the roof and cutting it a couple more times so that just the piece that was actually punctured into the house, punctured into the roof was remaining. And then they were able to, to pry that out and surprisingly, it looks like they didn't damage the deck too much or the house too much. Some of our electric fence did get a little mangled. What do you think, Spiker? Stop eating my jacket. <clears throat> it's still a big mess out here but it's good to be heading in the right direction. Does it feel good to have this starting to be taken care of? Yeah, I pulled up 300 feet of fence today, I think, and saved every piece of it. Every piece of our Premier One fence I saved. That's impressive. A lot of it was really tangled in the tree stumps and, yep. and the other debris. Really it's really tangled in all of the stuff over there <laughs> because of the big spaghetti mess, but I can lay it out later in the yard and untangle it and fold it up nicely. But yeah, I think anybody who uses this fence would be kind of just completely frustrated and annoyed just trying, if they were even just to look at this fence the way I have it right now, because they would know what a pain in the ass is gonna be to untangle it. Well, obviously the fences are down and our animals are uh, would be free to roam about. But tell them, tell everybody where the where the goats are. They're in the temporary shelter again, or in the pop-up tent in the basement. So we've got them confined and safe where they are. Mm -hmm. Indigo's trying to eat a bucket. She's been trying to eat the shelter. She was chewing on the, on the inside fence part a few minutes ago, which was really funny to look at. You can see all the way into her throat. <laughs> because she was trying to grab two pieces of fence at once in her giant mouth. <laughs> so, oh look. See, she's... Yep, it's loose and she's trying to get out. Let's look. Somebody's got cabin fever. There you go. So they've, uh, they've done the big tree that was on the house. They've done the tree that was just grazing Wendy's car and in our driveway and the top had hit our house. It smooshed the side of my car. You act like it was just nothing. I had a tree on my car. <laughs> yeah. Now that this tree is gone, we can see the damage to Wendy's car. It's not too severe when you consider the size of the tree that came down. Got a little broken tail light here and a pe pretty serious dent right through here. Other than being a little dirty, I think that's about the extent of it. And the next one to go is the big cherry tree that is, Leaning. you know, smashed into our brand new goat shed. Their plan is to tie a rope around part of it as they're cutting it down so they can pull it out towards the yard and hopefully it will fall away from our barn shed and so that so that our barn shed won't also be damaged yeah. I'm hoping it doesn't damage my baby trees <laughs> but I guess we've got some fruit trees over there too and yeah 
hopefully it won't uh, hit those. I'd rather hit them than the barn shed. So what do you think? Do you find this interesting, stressful, exciting? What's the word you'd use? Stressful. This is not exciting. <laughs> I think it's kind of interesting. It's disappointing to have these really good trees die here on the property. And, and it'll look a little naked around here without them. All right, they've got about three guys on the rope pulling the top section of the tree. One guy on the chainsaw down below. Second chainsaw to try and free the first chainsaw. So now they're trying to wedge it a little bit to, again to free up the chainsaw a little bit. Okay, that's relieving a little pressure. And it's starting to come down. It's definitely a little lower than it has been. They're pulling on the ropes. We quit narrowing. <laughs> I find it kind of exciting. It's interesting. I haven't seen this happen before. All right, the trunk is splitting a little bit. And you can really hear it wanting to give way to gravity. Starting to move back up to a vertical position. Oh, the metal is the metal is bending a little more. Here it comes. Look out! Look out! Get out of the way! Oh, the old guy is all right. The tree slid back a little. Doesn't look like anybody was hurt. This may make it more difficult to get the tree out. At least nobody was hurt. Okay, he's cutting it a little up higher this time, closer to the shed itself. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm stepping out of here yeah, because yeah. I can hear that tree yeah, thank wanting you. to move. Thank you, thank you. Half of the tree is, of course, slid off of the barn, but it's still directly above the barn shed. We'll see how they relieve the weight so that it doesn't hurt the barn shed. It looks like they're debating on exactly where to cut. The idea is for it to get the whole thing to just roll right off of the barn shed. Oh, it's moving. It's, oh, it's cracking slowly and it's slowly sinking down. Oh, it's, it's uh, hitting the barn shed again, or hitting the uh, goat shed a little bit again. And again, this is half of the tree. He's basically making a second cut now to try and get that tree to move a little bit more the way he wants to. It's a tricky thing to do without getting the chainsaw stuck again. Well, the, the bulk of that tree is still up on top of the barn shed. He's just chopping up pieces of the lower section now. All right, so we've, he's cut off sections from the bottom up and he's limbed some of the tree, but it's still up on the barn shed. Yeah, yeah, still. Yeah, but he's coming, he's coming down, down too, he's coming. Wendy wanted to see from the inside of the yeah. barn shed, yeah. Yeah. or the inside of the goat shed, what the damage looked like. Not too much different. You might be putting a little more pressure on this second board now. You can see a little buckle along here now. But 
I think they're going to have to take this whole side off anyway. So the siding is really, yeah. Redo the, the whole side here, probably. <laughs> I kept this so pristine. I mean, they hadn't You didn't even, want me to walk on it uh, with muddy shoes. They hadn't even walked on it when we got it, and I kept it so clean. And I was thinking about putting a rug down and having it be nice in there for when I wanted to do stuff. <laughs> <laughs> gonna have to take them one by one and move them into their barn and do the fence stuff now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or you could leave them in the shelter, the temporary shelter. I don't really like leaving them in there. It's really gross. Okay. Well, it seems like they stayed there most of the, this week. I, I could probably fence around the front area and that would be sufficient for the evening anyways. He is now up on a ladder, kind of up, up on the barn shed, taking off a few of the smaller branches. He's getting higher, and he's climbing up onto the barn shed. It looks like he's just trying to free a couple of branches so the tree will slide off. Certainly wouldn't want the tree to slide and take him with it. Looks like he's giving himself a little more room by getting rid of the small branches so they're not in his way. This looks like one of the main branches holding it to the roof. Oh, the whole tree is moving a little now. Slowly coming down closer to the roof. Still up on the roof though. He's clearing off some of the debris that he's uh, chopped down previously. Climbing over the tree now. Okay, so now some more branches, some of the larger branches are just coming down off the roof from what he's uh, freed up. It looks like he might be just turning it into a, a tall, single trunk that will then come off the roof. We'll have to see. As he cuts them off, he's dragging them over to the side of the barn shed and dropping them over. So the tree is almost free of branches, but it's still up on the barn shed. Looks like there's one main forking branch that's holding it together. He's cutting the tree in half now. The vibration itself has moved the tree a bit off, the, off of the structure. Okay, the top half of the tree is coming down on the other side of the barn shed, but it's still, it's still up there. And here it comes. Okay, it just it's just leaning against the shed now, so it's that's pretty good. Now he is up on the roof of the goat shed, limbing off some of the branches of the tree that's still up on that up on that structure. It's good to know that that roof is perfectly capable of holding uh, holding somebody's weight walking on top of it. It has started to rain. I think I might walk over towards the house or I'll be out of the rain. The, the bulk of the tree is on our property, but the very top is hanging over the fence over a little shed in our neighbor's yard. Looks like he's cutting through, about halfway through, to the top of the tree. And it's, it's loose. So now he's, he's trying to drag, let gravity drag the top half of the tree, kind of down between the barn, the barn shed and the goat shed. Made a few thumps on the way down. We'll see if there's any damage. Okay, the tree is now resting a little bit more on the ground, the top half of the tree. 
All right, he needs to put more gas in the chainsaw. I'll try and get a, a little shot of what it looks like so far. Oh, they're just trading out chainsaws so he can keep going. It is a little slippery up on the roof. Okay, the tree just touched down on the roof of the, of the goat shed. Basically chopping up some of the smaller pieces and dropping it between the, shed, the two sheds. If I were to guess, I'd say he's going to be cutting off small sections of the, t of the end of the branch that's... Small sections of the end of the trunk that's touching the top of the goat shed until he gets up to the point where it's uh, a little thicker and it's broken. But he's trading out chainsaws again. Let's join the... With each short section that he's cutting off of the tree, the rest of it thumps down on the top of the goat shed and he kicks off each of the log rounds over the back. Hopefully the roof isn't taking too much damage in this process. Alright, so that section did not actually come down on the roof after he cut off the piece. So it's hanging in air again and he's just continuing to cut off little little sections of it so the last piece will be light enough just to throw over. Okay, so now he's done with the piece that was overhanging the goat shed and he's working on the piece that's leaning up still against the goat shed. Again, just taking off short sections and tossing them over the side. He's gonna be right up against the metal of the shed on this cut. It looks like from this angle. He is walking on the roof. It is a little slippery, especially with all the sawdust up there now. This job is mostly done. It's just the section of the tree that's still connected to the root ball that's left just, just touching the, the goat shed. All right, and now he's up there with a the broom just sweeping off the roof so it's not so slippery for him. The remaining tree is no longer touching the goat shed so it's just in the ground leaning towards the shed and there's a lot of debris cleanup and chopping that needs to happen for the, the stuff that's come off. This is the most impressive tree fall close to our house. It is just on the other side of the fence from our property but just look at this crater that this root ball has pulled up. It looks like the tree was just simply aimed to follow the fence line. And I'm not too disappointed with how it fell. It's straddling another tree on the other side of the bank. Just recently, I shot a sequence of video that I was intending to use as one of my intros. Well, this area is so radically transformed. I think I'll show you what it looked like before using that, and then kind of walk up through here again so you can see what it looks like now.
I said before that I wasn't too disappointed with how this tree fell. It literally follows the fence line, real close to the fence line, and it's, it's a bridge across the ravine, which visually is kind of an interesting element. And in the future, as ferns and different things grow on it, it'll be a real whimsical element, I think. Now, it's, it's not my property, so somebody, whether it's the farmer who's leasing this land or the owner who owns it, could come along and decide to just chop it up for firewood. I'd be a little disappointed if that happened, but right now it's kind of interesting. This, this big this big crater from the root ball is a little bit of a hazard. But erosion might fill it in. You know, these things just happen in nature and uh, it's part of the wilderness. I guess parts of the wilderness that are chaos are kind of beautiful in and of themselves. We're just about out of daylight, and the guys are calling it a day. There's still more work to do out here, so they'll be back tomorrow. But let me show you what they've done so far. First, Wendy has put Indigo and Rogue here in the stall, where they'll be out of everybody's way. How do you like it in here? I think they're doing okay. Quite a big difference. It looks a lot neater back here than I thought it might actually. I'm very pleased with the work. Still have some work to do back here. They're also gonna be bringing a truck to pick up a lot of this extra debris around here. So that'll be nice to have it out of our way and not have to deal with it. You're not abandoned. We're still here for you. No need to yell.